listening to the Project Ignite podcast, where real digital entrepreneurs reveal their very best tips, tools, and strategies to help you ignite and grow your online business. ProjectIgnite.com. Your digital business starts here. Now, here's your host, Derek Gale. Welcome to the Project Ignite podcast, a podcast designed to skip the hype, skip the BS, and bring you real actionable tips and strategies to help you grow your online business from people that are actually doing it. Holy crap, what a novel idea. This is your host, uh, Derek Gale, and today we're going to be diving deep into social media to build your personal brand. And I mean, let's face it, uh, social media today is a noisy place to be. Uh, You know, everybody and their dog, literally their dog, is an aspiring social media influencer. So how do you stand out from this ever-growing crowd? And today, that's uh, what we're going to talk about. And I think today's guest is going to bring some uh, comedy and some ideas to the show. Uh, He's a revolutionary marketing expert who went from homeless to be being seen on Forbes, Business Insider, Influensive, and Social Media Today for his unique social media expertise. He helps public figures build their personal brand using his unique methodology of uh, personal branding and social media marketing disruption and knows what it takes to disrupt, I think that's a key word, uh, the marketplace and generate attention. Uh, This guy's live streamed to an extended audience over a million followers with over 30,000 concurrent viewers and has created uh, viral content on almost every social media platform, even before, well, social media was a big thing. So uh, without further ado let's do this i'd like to welcome austin to the show austin and you know i always forget to ask right before i start this show austin how do i pronounce your last name Juliano. Juliano. Silent. God, you know, I should have you know I, when i <laughs> it's one of those things you read it you see it online and then you go to say it and you're like damn it it's uh yeah, so the eye is silent. Yes. So basically the eye is useless. You could drop the eye and everybody would pronounce it right. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> All right, okay. Fan- and is that is that Italian? No. Very much Italian. Is it, okay, okay, I was right. Okay. All right, awesome. Uh well, welcome to the show and uh thank you for being here. Now, before we get into the the um the meat and potatoes of this. First of all, I loved your uh, your dance during the intro music. Uh, that was fantastic. Um, Thank you. And uh, in fact, the uh, yeah. So before we get into this, give me your journey, right? Like, how did you get into this? How did you become this social media guy? Um, yeah, share your journey through through kind of sheer dumb luck and a lot of personal development. I started in the internet marketing space kind of the same time you did, because we were talking a little bit before this, when um, like the biggest name in internet marketing was like Brian Moran and his Get 10,000 fans. He now has made Samcart, which is this massively yeah. useful product. And I was following along kind of what he was doing there. Um, and one of the biggest challenges with this industry is it's full of con artists. It's full of people who talk a lot of talk, Mm -hmm. but don't actually have wisdom. And when they go and they share something that's a tactic, it only works a little bit because there's like, it's like an iceberg. They're like, they show you the tip, but there's all that other information underneath that you need to know to be able to execute the tactic to make it really actually effective. And so I was always piecing things together. And basically, I was in this little uh, town in upstate New York, and everybody in my little town was doing print advertisement. And this was like 10, 15 years ago. And they were spending $1,000 to get 10,000 impressions in the magazine, you know, uh, the local magazine. And I'm like, what? (laughs) Like, I I wasn't even very good at what I did. And I'm like, this doesn't make sense to me. Mm -hmm. Like, and... I got my first client by basically being like, listen, you're already established. You already like uh, an extra thousand in advertising is not going to do anything. Let's just pause this for a month and let me see what I can do with this for you. I'm not going to charge you anything, but let's just see, because I think this is really the way I convinced the person I did the work. And with Facebook advertising, which was just being released, I was like a thousand dollars 
let's see how many impressions we could get because that was like the only metric they were basing it off of. And it was just massively successful, comparatively speaking. Uh, looking back at it now, I'm like cringing at the work I did, but sure. who cares? We all, we all look know? back and cringe at our, <laughs> our first, yeah. That. And it, it kind of, being young, being like 23 at the time, I thought I was on top of the world. I was one of those people that I call out now. And I, I started walking around like I had my big boy pants on, selling, you know, advertising, Facebook advertising to the small town, thinking I was a hot shot. And like every hot shot, shot myself in the foot and literally my entire business crumbled. Mm-hmm. And losing everything, literally I like slept out of my office, which I wasn't paying rent on because like I was behind I lost my apartment like I lost everything I uh I decided I was like okay the smart move would be move back home into my mom's basement kind of like get a job working at like a pizza hut or something Mm -hmm. and like rebuild myself up and there was this thing inside of me that was like I know this is technically what I should do but if I do this I know I will internally die I will not ever escape from my mom's basement. And I'm like, I can't do that. And I was like, what am I being called to do? And I was like, well, this is the dumbest idea. And I found that when I find like that dumb idea that kind of scares you, but also kind of excites you, if you jump towards it, it leads you into some crazy places. So my girlfriend and I packed up what little belongings we had. We drove down to New York City Uh, my friend who was down there was like leaving for a month. So we stayed at her place for a month. And then after that, like we just hopped in the car and we slept out of the car for months, just trying to make it in New York city. I had no connections. I had, you know, no money. I had no opportunities. And I was just like, Jay-Z says, if you could make it here, you could make it anywhere. (laughs) And I'm like, Uh, okay, like, what am I going to do? Like, I, I guess I technically always had the escape back up, Mm -hmm. but I, I didn't, I didn't like, yes, I technically did, but I didn't like, I, I couldn't do it. Sure. And being in kind of like the social media space, South by Southwest happened and this new social media medium started. And it was called live streaming. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, well, let me check this out. They're in Texas doing this thing. My friends are talking about it. So I download this app called Meerkat. And South by Southwest, everybody's trying to live stream. The connection is shoddy. Everybody's trying to use the data. So the first one I set up, I go live. I have a solid connection because I'm sitting in a Starbucks for $1.50 or something with a small cup of coffee all day. And I ended up having 3,000 people tune in and watch me and talk to me and engage with me. And I was like, oh, man. So here's the first tip. If you want to break through the noise of social media, find the new platforms, get on and start engaging Mm -hmm. because you're going to get the most amount of organic growth. Now, that's not to say you can't go onto YouTube and massively explode for sure, even though it's an established platform. But New emerging social medias give you the most amount of growth. So right now, TikTok and Clubhouse are the two that are massively powerful. Mm -hmm. But if you wait six months, there'll be a new one that nobody's ever heard of. And if you jump on it, you're going to have a lot of room for growth. So anyways, uh, so started doing that. And I was like, okay, this is crazy. This is powerful. I'm totally jumping into this live streaming thing. And I started doing it rather consistently. And one of the things I was talking about rather often was marketing and business because, again, it's kind of all I knew and I was a one-trick pony and I'm not very interesting. I like this sort of stuff, so I talk about it. And what ended up happening is, again, there was that little internal dialogue that started to happen that was like, hey, Austin, you're being inauthentic. You're sleeping out of your car. You're a failed business owner. Like, why are you giving advice when <laughs> you're you're in this place? You're like you're at the lowest of low low. It's like yeah. why is the homeless person trying to give stock advice? Like that sure, doesn't make sense. Sure. Like and so I was like, okay. So I'm at this like crossroads. I can either continue faking it till I make it or 
I could literally tell the entire world exactly what happened to me. And I was like, if I follow that path, what is the worst case scenario? I'd be called a fraud. Everybody leaves me. And I'm kind of still in the same place of being homeless with nothing. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's scary. I'm like, but at least I get to be honest with myself. Yeah. Yep. And, and so I decided to do it. And instead of losing everything, everybody went, holy crap. This is that thing that everybody uses the word authenticity, yep. being real and honest and vulnerable and not sugarcoating and bullshitting and trying to be more than what you are. Uh, oh, swear words. Sorry. No, I I, you're, 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 you're golden. We're, we're kind of PG here. So you, you can, you're good. You're good. I, I will censor myself. My apologies. Oh, no, no. PG means you can drop the odd one, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Nevertheless, uh, it ended up working out. And what ended up happening is through a mentality shift that happened when I was homeless, which was recognizing that the reason I got there was not for one major decision, but thousands upon thousands of micro decisions that led me down a path. And if I chose different decisions, I would get a different result. I ended up being able to work with Meerkat. I actually did a whole event for them on my rooftop, once I actually got a place to live in New York City, uh, I got to work with Periscope. Later on, that turned into working with Snapchat, uh, doing some consulting with them. I was getting clients being like, hey, help me build this thing. And I was like, listen, I'm just telling you what I'm figuring out. I'm what later on Gary Vaynerchuk says, documenting the process. Mm -hmm. Great. That's what I was doing. I was just like, this is what I'm trying. This is what is working for me currently. It might work for you. And then it later on became TikTok and lively and streaming to thousands upon thousands of kids dressing up as a unicorn, dancing around like a silly person. So uh, I know we're about breaking through social media and there's a lot that I can share, but that is my very short story wow. of success and failure, which is not a linear path. No, not not at all. And I definitely want to dig into this unicorn because I didn't see that coming. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, I mean, there were so many, I think, important uh, lessons, actually, in just what you shared there from a, a story. And, and I, I, two things I want to point out, and you kind of highlighted it. Um, one was authenticity, right? And And we live in a day and an age where I think... The uh, immediate go-to for so many people on social and live and stuff is to try and be, you know, something they're not or try and position themselves to be, you know, the cool dude, the aspirational person they all want to be with the private jets and, uh, you know, taking pictures in front of, you know, least, least Lamborghinis, right? Um, and, you know, I, and look, I'm not saying it doesn't work because in some cases it can work, right? But I don't think you truly build the raving fans and the true connection that you do when you are authentic. And and authenticity, I think, is sort of, from my perspective, underlined by vulnerability, right? Like, yes, and that's 100%. so that's so key, right? If you want to connect with people, be vulnerable. Show them your weaknesses, your struggles. And, uh, and let's face it, people like to root for the underdog. Yeah, absolutely. Literally yesterday. Uh, so I have a massive thing coming up and I've been working 16 hour days for the past four or five days. And there's a hustle mentality that's pervasive in our culture that is toxic. Totally. You're not yeah. supposed to work 16 hours a day no. all the time. Sometimes it's great when you have a lot and you're driven and you're motivated, go sure. for it. Like that was me, right? Yesterday I woke up and I had a massive anxiety attack. Literally nothing in my life is wrong or bad, mm -hmm. but I broke down. I was crying. I was like not in control of myself, having all the signs and the symptoms mm -hmm. that is completely normal. And the, the world we live in makes it seem like we're not allowed to have those days. So I had a mental health day. I literally mm -hmm. was like, I'm not doing anything. I don't care. I am mm -hmm. down for the day. I need to take care of myself. And that is one of the hardest things for, I think, as, to be honest, men. 
it's yeah. hard for us men yep. to actually admit that we have weakness. Totally. And, and you're right. I mean, a bit of a rabbit hole here, but that whole hustle culture, uh, you know, there's times in your life where you have to hustle, right? You have to sure. burn the candle, but it's not sustainable. And if you believe that is the new normal and that's how you're going to live your life, you're going to blow yourself up. And, you know, it's funny you talk about anxiety and stuff. I mean, look, I, I see behind the scenes of so many of the gurus and experts and stuff. And I know personally, and, you know, everybody gets up and puts on their, you know, their aspirational pictures and, you know, doing all this. And what you don't see behind the scenes is most entrepreneurs, you know, that I know are, you know, have anxiety, have worries, have stresses and stuff like that. And, you know, the problem being is when nobody's actually telling the truth and being vulnerable about it, uh, for all the people that are just starting down this journey, they think they're weird or they're, they're, you know, Oh my God, I'm, I can't do this. I have anxiety. Look at these guys. They're super confident and have everything together. It's like not even close. (laughs) It's true. Um, okay. So, all right, let, let's, uh, let's dig in. Let's pull back from the rabbit hole. Yeah. Let's pull back from the rabbit hole. Let's talk about the actual, uh, what you do and what you help people do, creating personal brands online. Because again, we live in this time and place where, I mean, everybody and their dog or cat is an influencer, um, is yep. trying to create personal brand, is, is yeah, you're trying to create that audience online. Um, sure. And 99% are, are failing miserably, right? Um, what do people need to do you know, to, to stand out. And I mean, one of the key words I saw you use a lot is disrupt. Exactly. Okay. Before you create a single post on social media, go out there, try and create a business or anything like that. I'm going to say a cliche word and a cliche phrase, but let's dive in really deep to it. You have to start with your why. It is the most important and fundamental aspect. Now, this was actually really difficult for me to understand, especially when I was homeless, when I was just starting out, because I was like, well, this is really easy. I just need to make money. I need to put food in my belly and a roof sure. over my yeah. head. Uh, but it goes so much deeper than that. And there's an exercise that I like to do with my clients called the seven layers of why. Basically, if you take any sort of question and you act like a five-year-old and ask why over and over and over and over again, and you're really honest with yourself, you can go insanely deep and create a really powerful why. Mm -hmm. So let me give an example right here. I'm just going to try and build it off the top of my head. Like you start with the question is, what is building your brand? Because it's such a cliche phrase. It, it encompasses sure. so much. Everybody builds their brand. Everything you do, you know, is building your brand. What is it? And if we answer the first layer of why, well, okay, it's growing your following. Okay, why then do you want to grow your following? Well, because I want more people to know who I am. Okay, that's narcissistic. But why do you want more people to know who you are? Well, because I want more people to buy my services from me. Okay. Why do you want more people to buy your services from you? Well, then I get to make more money. Okay. But why? Well, because I want to provide for my family. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's a million ways to provide for your family. Why do you want to provide for your family through selling your services? Well, Because, and now it starts getting a little bit harder. You have to get really personal with yourself when you start getting to these deeper layers. For me, this is the only thing I can answer. Why do I want to do this? Well, because my mother sacrificed literally everything for me. She was in multiple abusive relationships. So that way, myself and my sister had a roof over our heads. And she later left those abusive relationships. We lived out of a trailer. She slept on a couch just so my sister and I could have rooms. Mm -hmm. Okay, but that's my mother. What about me? Well, I want to make her proud. And more importantly, I want to make myself proud. Well, Austin, there's a million ways you could do this and make her proud. Why particularly are you talking about building your brand, building your, you know, your social media following, selling a service, doing this whole thing? Well, I grew up during the Enron crisis which later went into the housing crisis, which later went on to watching my mother and my father and that generation be sold out 
at 64 years old, the jobs they worked at, the retirement gone. I watched literally everything be taken away from my parents and then myself being sold this lie of go to college, get a degree, you know, and then you'll be provided for. Mm -hmm. And I learned that literally the only thing that cannot be taken from me is the investments I make within myself, learning skill sets, creating uh, connections, building an audience, creating content. And the more I invest in myself, the more security I create for those around me who I love. And then the prouder I am of myself. So when it comes right down to it, I care so much about myself and those around me that it only makes sense for me to invest in building my own personal brand. Gotcha. And that's much deeper why. Yeah. And, and, and you're right. I, I mean, it's funny. And I, I mean, I love that you need to know what your why is. And uh, it's actually an exercise I go through with um, when I'm helping new entrepreneurs. I'm like, you know, they're like, I want to start a business. I'm like, okay, well, you know, before you get why? started, you need, to, you need to have a pretty clear and compelling why. And, uh, and, and the worst why is money. Because yes. m- money in and of itself um, is it doesn't do anything for us. It's what, what money can allow us to do, whether that's take care of our families or to have the freedom to do stuff and stuff like that, right? Um, so, okay. So now when we talk about personal brand though, okay. So, okay. So you say, sure. okay, you start with why, right? And you take them through yes. the seven layers of why. And once they've identified that why, why they're doing it, how does that translate back to personal brand and building it? Well, it translate back in a couple of ways. First off, as I'm sure you can attest to, this is not an easy road and there's going to be days where months, weeks, whatever amount of time frame where you need a ton of motivation. Sure. So becoming really clear on your why is one of the things that helps power you through all those down days. But then it also helps you, excuse me, it helps you identify who your target market is, how you can serve them, What's unique about your story that is so compelling that people actually want to become fans of the movement you start to create? Mm -hmm. And then it helps you actually create your system. And I'm really big on when it comes to personal branding, the difference between a really successful personal brand and an amateur is a successful personal brand has a system that they put people through to replicate a process and create consistent results. Whereas everybody else is just kind of winging it. Right. And you might disagree with me here. No, I, no, I, I, I absolutely don't. I, I mean, yeah. So, I mean, I guess when I think of brand and the term brand, I mean, I forget, sure. I, I forget who said it, but a brand is basically what people say about you when you're not in the room. Right. Exactly. Right. And so the system is the mechanism to deliver the result that people talk about. Yes. Exactly. So, okay. So give me an example, like yours. What is your personal brand? What do people say about you when you're not in the room? (laughs) Depends if they (laughs) like me or they hate me. (laughs) Uh, So there's a few things. One, if you look across all my social media and it depends honestly, who's talking about me, Mm -hmm. but if you look across my social media, I am not a serious person. I talked about it. I dressed up as a unicorn and danced around. I don't believe in that. I don't believe in being extremely serious because life is just too short. Mm -hmm. I don't believe in that hustle mentality. I used to think I was super, super lazy when in reality, I learned that I love my free time Mm -hmm. and I love my time spending like playing with my dog or whatever. And I will do whatever it takes to create a system to give me more time to do the things I actually want to do. And later on, I learned Bill Gates literally talked about this, finding the lazy band to do the difficult job because they will find the most efficient path. (laughs) That's me. Yeah. I love it. I love finding systems and structures and putting it into place. Uh, So uh, I have testimonials all across my website of what people say about me. Mm -hmm. It's weird. Despite the fact that I've grown an audience, despite the fact that I've had, you know, lots of accolades, I still feel weird talking about myself in a positive light because it's still that imposter mentality plays in my brain. So uh, this is a really hard question for me to answer. And I'm just going to be transparent with you. Do you know what? 
I totally get it because I, I, I've always struggled with that as well. And, and it's funny because I lecture people. I'm like, you need to have, you know, the confidence and you need to be able to say, here's what I can do for you. Here's what I teach people to do. And I, and I have that. Oh, and yeah. I can do that. Um, Me too. But it is difficult to, and I, this is an important message for, I think, everybody listening. Most people are not good at talking themselves up. Yes. Um, and, and no matter what level of success you get to, uh, imposter syndrome is real where you, you, you feel like, oh, God, what, you know, am I really qualified to talk about this? You know, can I really do this? And, uh, and, and that's normal, right? That's totally normal. So, okay, so let's, uh, okay, so a, as we work through this, I want to talk about the disruption component, though, because. Absolutely. I, you know, I think that's kind of the key here. So people figure out who they are. They figure out, okay, here's my message. Here's here's my system. Here's my why. That's all good and well. But there's, you know, a thousand other people with a similar why out there or something like that. How do they stand out? How do you disrupt? Sure. Sure. The key is creating emotional resonance with your audience. If you think about any sort of social media posts that have gone insanely viral, it has done one thing. It has created emotional resonance with you. It has made you feel something, whether it's laughing your face off, whether it's getting insanely angry at some minuscule thing, uh, whether it's making you cry. But the whole point of social media that we need to understand is 95 to 98% of it is in this middle spectrum that doesn't make us feel anything. And we have to go more and more and more to the extremes to create that emotional resonance. This is a reason why outrage marketing is so effective. Well, like, well, I mean, th- th- love them or hate them, Trump has dominated the outrage marketing machine yep. to an insane level because he understands that if you keep that cycle going, Nobody can fixate on a single topic long enough to do anything about it. And then we just emotionally get exhausted, Mm -hmm. right? Influencers do that all the time. Like you'll see it across the board. The whole reason Jake Paul and Logan Paul, two of the biggest YouTubers are making as much money as they understand that 50% of the people in the world want to see them get punched in the face. So they're giving them that opportunity with their whole boxing matches. Like I don't like them. But I respect the the drive they have and the understanding of this whole concept. So when we go talking about creating some sort of disruption, what we have to do is we have to figure out the thing within our own personality that is uniquely us, that is something that you can take from like on a scale of one to 10, you can take it to a 20, right? One of the things that I learned about myself is I don't have that sensor in myself that says, Hey, this is going to be embarrassing for you. When I was 18, I snowboarded down a mountain in nothing but a leopard printed thong, skimming across the pond, making it to the front page of the paper because I thought it would be funny. And it was, I still have the photo. I can share it with you, but I don't think you want to see it. (laughs) I dressed up as a unicorn because I didn't see anybody else doing it. And I thought it would be fun. I didn't care. I don't get embarrassed that easily. I can't really tout myself up, but that's a confidence thing, but Mm -hmm. it's not an embarrassment thing. You know, so I learned to create sort of emotional disruption is I have to bring my insane, ostentatious personality to a 20 and put it out there. And it actually works insanely well. Um, And What I found too for myself is by doing that, it's that little sizzle that grabs people's attention. And then when you have the substance behind it and you can talk about things in depth, you create real impact. So that's what works for me. And what I try and do with my clients is basically find the system that works for them when it comes to creating content whether it's creating video content or creating blog articles or creating podcasts, find a thing that is your strength and then bring that to a 20. Okay. So now for all the people out there that aren't, um, I mean, you know, you're going to ask 98% of the people to, you know, dress up like a unicorn to get attention. They're going to be like, hell no. 
not going to happen. So, you know, for the average business person who wants to create um, emotional resonance with their audience, what are the other pathways? Okay. There's two things. Well, there's a bunch. First, from a business perspective, there are two ways to create content. There's the top down and the bottom up. If you think about a marketing funnel, you have awareness at the top, consideration Mm -hmm. in the middle, conversion at the end. The top down is creating a bunch of content on say like YouTube that gets a lot, a lot of eyeballs on it. How, what sort of content do we need to create to do that? Like how to articles or videos are great for that awareness stage. But the thing is they don't drive revenue. So what we have to do as business owners is start from the bottom up. So what I like to do and what I like to do with my clients is really start there. As a business, what is the content that your your audience is asking for to make the most sound purchasing decision and how do you give them that best piece of content? From a SEO blogging standpoint, there's a technique called the skyscraper technique. In essence, if you want to rank number one on Google, you create this super in-depth, long 3,000 word article that breaks down every single facet of the industry you're in and then make it so in-depth, so valuable, so perfect that everybody links to it and hits number one on Google. That's the basic concept. So in business, it really needs to be that, but in the reverse, like okay, how much does it cost to hire a social media consultant? Okay, that's a question that people want to know when they're hiring a social media consultant. So you break down the costs and you give them a calculator of how much it would cost based off of all these different factors. And then by creating that piece of content, you create, uh, you will create emotional resonance because what you're doing is you're actually answering the question that nobody else is answering in your industry. You're doing the thing that nobody else is doing, which is giving away all of your secrets. Mm-hmm. When you do that, you create trust. Yeah. And that is one of the hardest things to create. And a lot of people, a lot of business owners are scared. They're like, if I give away all of my secrets, my competitors are going to copy me. People aren't going to hire me. You know, like they're going to know how to do it themselves. And yeah, technically, a little small portion of that is true. But I've consistently found that the more you give away, the more you educate, the more you create trust with your audience, the more sales you create. Would you agree with this assessment? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's how I've always played my game. So yeah, uh, I mean, that's why I do podcasts. That's why I have a YouTube channel, right? Like, I mean, I, I look, there's a couple of ways you can go about it. I mean, there's the guy that, you know, there's the, the direct sales funnel approach where you are going to try and bring people in through a complete high pressure sales funnel. Um, and, Can't do it. and, and, you know, I mean, look, you, 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 people can be successful that way, but I've always believed that if you can put more content out there and almost become omnipresent when somebody's looking for, uh, information related to what you do and they keep finding you and they keep finding good stuff when they do want to make an investment, you don't have to have that super extensive, super aggressive sales funnel. I mean, you can, you still need a funnel. You still need to sure. sell your product, but it brings a better customer as well. So I, I'm, I'm a hundred percent behind you on that. I think that, that, that makes perfect sense. And I think trust is, you know, trust, especially in this day and age is in short supply. And how do you build trust? I think you build trust through exactly what you did you, by demonstrating that you have ability and knowledge in the subject matter that that person is interested in. And I think this is an interesting one. Um, you know, for the, how do you bridge for the, so, I mean, if you start with the trust, right, you know, that's one way to do it. Polarizing an audience as Trump did uh, and creating fear or anger or some sort of emotion is a, is a, is a very powerful way you know, it's us against them. And a lot of businesses do that. And that can be very, very powerful. But you take an interesting approach because you kind of go from the fun humor approach, right? Sure. You know, the insane approach and bring that back to business. And I personally think that's harder to do. Um, For a lot of people, it absolutely yeah. is. For me, it's harder to to do a high pressure sales tactic. I, sure. I don't like it. 
I learned yeah. those techniques. I don't like it. Yeah. For me, it's harder to write, like spend hours upon hours writing direct sales copy. Sure. I know it. I know how to do it. There's amazing resources. What's easier for me is because I'm a public speaker and I've been on video my entire life is to create a video yeah. of recording you know, the direct sales copy because there's authenticity that I get to bring to the table when you're seeing me talk, mm -hmm. which it's, it's about finding the strengths of the business owner who is the face of the company, right? Like, what is your strengths? If you can't get on camera, don't get on camera. If you can do podcasts, do podcasts. Because you were talking about being omnipresent. And what you do is you find the platform like podcasting and you use that single uh, platform, the content you create there on all your different channels, right? I'm sure you break this podcast down and turn it into blog articles and totally. email marketing. Yeah. But then you can also turn it into carousel posts for LinkedIn and Instagram, which work insanely well right now. Uh, if you're doing video, you have that. You can splice up all the clips. It doesn't take that much more to create all the different types of content. And if you have the team in place, it's really, really easy and really effective. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, okay. So now um, before we wrap up, I've got one more question sure. here for you. And that's something you mentioned early on. And that was jump on new platforms before they effectively get too competitive and claim your audience there. And, uh, and that's, you know, that's, I don't disagree with the approach. It's just never approach I've taken. And the reason why I've never taken it is because I always want to wait and make sure that the platform's going to be around for more than a year before I, I fire a ton of my time, resource and effort into pulling it into my systems and machines, right? Um, sure. But I also totally see the side that you're going for there, right? Um, but again, like, look at Meerkat, look at Periscope, right? Like, I mean, absolutely. God, I don't. Are they still around? No. Yeah. Not they, really. Did, did they get bought? Meerkat, Meer, so Meerkat basically was dead after three days. It just <laughs> took a long time. It just because. Per because Periscope was bought out by Twitter right. before Periscope even launched. Um, they fought for a while. They, and then basically Facebook came out with Live, which then kind of just killed both of them. And anything Twitter touches eventually dies. And you're 100%. I understand where you're coming mm -hmm. from, like investing a ton of time and energy. And I know that mentality. And like, I don't fault it. Trust me. Mm -hmm. What I have found is taking a small portion of your time, very yeah. small, and playing around and testing creates so much growth and benefit for you as a brand that's insane. So long before uh, uh, freaking Zoom calls started happening, there's a social media by the name of Blab, which was a four-person call yeah. Zoom in essence. And there was a huge community that was built on that, that eventually it died. Those same connections that I've made there have turned into amazing connections in other places in my life. One of the best connections I made was Roberto Blake. He's this massive YouTuber, very successful, and we talk quite often. It's insane the connections you can make. So here's the thing. If you're going to take a small portion of your time and put it into new social media, you got to follow the four C's of emerging social media. They are creative content, learning the platform, learning how to create native engaging content will transition to all the other platforms, mm -hmm. collaboration, connecting with people and learning how to engage with them and do things for mutual benefit is universally useful. And those emerging social medias are a great place to learn those yeah. techniques and see what works. Building your community, because they will follow you to other platforms. But here's the one that most people forget for social media. And this goes for any platform, but especially true in emerging platforms. Caring. We do not treat social media like it's supposed to be used. We don't treat it like it's social. We try and take, 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 take. Am I getting enough likes? Am I getting enough reach? Am I getting enough? Am I getting enough? Am I getting enough? One of the reasons I blew up in TikTok and Lively uh, before I dropped it all was being a massive creator. I used to go into my audience's live streams when they were doing it and I would just stop in and say hello. 
And it does so much when you take a little bit of your time to engage with people in the way they want to be engaged with, with expecting nothing in return. Mm -hmm. If you want to see this in real time right now, pull out your phone, go on to LinkedIn. Instead of sending a direct message to somebody, there's a little icon that allows you to record your voice, record your voice, say hello to them, ask them what they're doing, give your little sales pitch. You have like 60 seconds and watch the response that happens back when you're taking time out of your day to engage with somebody with a new way by showing casing who you are. If you're not on LinkedIn, go on Twitter and do a Twitter video message to one of your followers. Watch the response that happens. I challenge everybody who's listening right now to do that. You can come to my LinkedIn or my Twitter or what, whatever and say it to me because I freaking love it. So whatever platform you want. That's that's awesome. I, and that, that's a great tip. I never even knew you could do that on LinkedIn. I mean, I you get messages. I get so many messages on LinkedIn that most of them like, but if somebody actually sent me a voice message, I would listen to it and it would create way more connection. But nobody is. I'm, I'm actually thinking, I don't think I've ever gotten one. Well, that's going to change as soon as we get off here. <laughs> Fantastic. All right, Everybody all right. who's listening, send Derek <laughs> a voice message. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, okay, so... That said, today's hot new platforms. I mean, this year it's been Clubhouse, you know, over the last year and half TikTok's just booming. Um, you know, and now obviously there's uh, Twitter's launch has launched their audio. You know, Facebook's working on one because Facebook can't come up with an original idea on their own. Um, what they don't uh, need to. <laughs> they don't. They just need to crush the competition. What? Uh, so, uh, which ones are you spending time on right now? I. Uh, have to be a hundred percent candid with everybody on here because this is what I do. I was massive in TikTok before it was TikTok. There was Musically, and then it got bought out by TikTok and Lively. And I was on there, and I was creating the content, and it is fun to watch. But I realized the sort of person I was becoming. I was creating content for the algorithm, and whenever I find myself doing that, I really start to dislike who I become. So I have stopped all of that. And I've moved over to a ton of public speaking and I create content now on YouTube around public speaking because it's what I'm enjoying creating. I don't care about the algorithms anymore. I've, I've chased this game long enough. I know how to do it. I'm successful enough at it. I now do stuff for me. So uh, I'm on LinkedIn and I'm on YouTube. Yeah. Those are my two platforms. And I mean, for a, a, you know, a social media consultant, that's probably makes the most sense hands down for for you to be there um have you spent any time on clubhouse any thoughts i've spent a little bit of time on clubhouse the thing is before there was clubhouse there was anchor which was kind of the same concept uh instead of the real time you would just send messages back and forth and anchor then turned into a podcasting thing so it's interesting to see where it goes um again though i'm always a little bit wary of Facebook because they do buy everything out or mm -hmm. they just crush the competition. There is massive benefit. I see it from, from my mindset of emerging social medias. If you have the time and energy, get on clubhouse, engage with people, create content on a regular schedule. Uh, like that is so effective. And then take that content, that audio content and bring it other places like a podcasting network, uh, sure. use otter.ai to transcribe it or rev.com to have it transcribed and turn that into blog articles and other platforms. Like I love it. Do that. Personally for me, I, I, I've lived social media so much that I personally have to step back. Because it's just, it's my entire business. Like I get obsessive over these things. Sure. So like, that's just me. Um, uh, it's, yeah. Yeah, no, that I'm makes sense. That. And look, I, you know, even for the listeners, you, you need to be, uh, there's only so much time in a day. You, you cannot be fully invested in every single platform. And so where do you put your effort? You put your effort where you're going to benefit your business the most and where the highest likelihood of your clients connecting with you is going to be in. I mean, for social media, LinkedIn, obviously, um, and, and YouTube, I, I think it makes perfect sense. Um, yeah, From I mean, a personal it, branding perspective, YouTube is the number one platform. Yeah. yeah. It's search based. 
which is fantastic. It's evergreen content. It's hard to to do well, but once you get it, it lasts pretty much forever. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, the fact that you know Google, Google will pull you into their SERP is a backdoor into Google. It, there's so many good reasons to be on YouTube. Um, I mean, TikTok's fascinating. You know, I'm, I'm starting to explore TikTok. Clubhouse, you know, that goes back to my philosophy of, yeah, I'll wait and see if they're around in a year. I mean, I... I, I if I was a betting man, there it's just too easy to be dominated by a replicate. Player. Replicate like there's no yeah. mo- there's no moat there. You know, Snapchat had uniqueness; they had momentum. But my God, if somebody told me that, oh yeah, the hottest social network in 2021 is going to be audio, I would have been like, you're nuts. Like audio, like I mean, <laughs> you know, actually, it's like a step from backwards a, from a from a mental health standpoint, the most powerful social media that's best for your mental health is actually podcasting. It doesn't engage in the mechanisms of addiction, which is what all social medias do. Yeah. Uh, it, the dopamine response is like five times more addictive than crack cocaine. I think a study was found. Yeah. So like social media from a mental health is really, really toxic. But from a uh, standpoint of like building a business, YouTube podcasting, they're great. Yeah. Oh, I absolutely. That's why I do it. That's why I love it. And, and, and I mean, you know, people ask me, well, why do you podcast? Because they're like, you don't have any sponsors on your show or anything like that. I'm like, yeah, it's cause not why I do it, right? I do it because A, it brings value to my audience, but B, at least once a week, I get to have a cool conversation with somebody like yourself I, and discuss a topic that I find fascinating. Like what a freaking amazing way to spend an hour every week. So you can't go wrong with it. Well, look, I, I want to thank you uh, so much, Austin, for being here on the show today, um, for sharing your wisdom, knowledge, and experience, and you know, authentically sharing your story, which I don't think enough people do, right? Um, and uh, that being said, before we wrap up, if want, people want to connect with you, um, hire you, uh, watch your crazy videos, where do they go? Sure. Easiest is my website, Austin, A-U-S-T-I-N-I-U-L-I-A-N-O. If you want to learn more about personal branding, my philosophy, and this is something that you're interested in, go to buildingyourbrandin30days.com. Sign up. I'll send you 30 days of content and you'll learn. Perfect. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. And uh, for everybody listening, the URL will be in the show notes at projectignite.com. And uh, now it's over to you guys. Uh, As I always say, if you want to make this actually make a difference in your life, in your business, you need to apply that final essential ingredient, and that is action. You know, we talked about a lot of different tactics, strategies, things that you can actually apply. If you're not getting results on social media right now, uh, ask yourself why. And more importantly, come up with your why. And I love that seven-step process, the seven levels of why. Uh, You know, it's something I've talked about, and I love that seven levels. Keep asking yourself why. And don't be afraid to be authentic. Be yourself. That's what people want to connect with online. And so if you liked what you heard here today, please just take a moment, head over to your favorite social media platform, and uh, click the like uh, button, uh, leave me a review. That's a fuel that keeps me going, making these episodes for you guys to benefit from. And on that note, this episode is a wrap. Woo! Thanks for listening to another info-packed episode of the Project Ignite podcast with Derek Gale. Any links mentioned along with an entire transcript of this episode can be found at projectignite.com slash podcast. And to make sure you never miss another episode, go to iTunes or SoundCloud now and subscribe.